Here's something cool that scientists have discovered recently. Schrodinger's black holes. Yep, the scariest objects in our universe turned out to be even more terrifying. Now, we know that they can also exist in many states at once. But what does it mean? Let's find out. Black holes are mysterious titans of our universe. Sometimes it feels like the more we learn about them, the less we know. We discovered them quite recently, in the 20th century. And since then, we've been finding various black holes all over the universe. Their sizes range from the size of a small town to horrifyingly unimaginable. But their most important feature is probably their huge mass. And that's where a recent study comes to play. Scientists have discovered that black holes have very unusual quantum properties. They found out that each black hole can be both large and small, light and heavy, no longer living and alive. Well, maybe except for the last part. Let's hope that there aren't actually any living black holes. That would be great. But the main point of the discovery is that each black hole can be in all possible states at the same time. It sounds weird, doesn't it? What is it actually supposed to mean? Well, the ability to be everything at the same time isn't a new concept in science. This is what physicists call a superposition, or, to put it simply, a state of uncertainty. Quantum physicists discovered this first in tiny quantum particles. They noticed a very strange thing. As long as we don't observe a particle, it literally exists in all states at the same time. And only when we start interacting with it, for example, looking at it, measuring it, or just doing something, only then does the particle decide what state it should be in. Here's an example of this. Imagine that you have a ball in a box. You don't know what it looks like, and the thing is, as long as it stays in the box, the ball is all colors at the same time. Only when you take it out of the box does it finally choose one color. All this happens instantly, so you don't notice it. For you, the ball has always been blue. Sounds pretty scary, right? What? And it raises a lot of questions. For example, how do these particles understand that we're observing them? Hmm. How do they decide which state to be in? And what does our world really look like if we only see what is shown to us? Of course, this discovery caused a huge stir in the scientific community. No wonder, it does sound a bit unusual. That's what physicist Erwin Schrödinger also thought at the beginning of the 20th century. The ideas of quantum theories seemed delusional to him. That's why he decided to challenge them. He conducted a famous experiment. You've probably heard about it, what? even if you don't know anything about science at all. Yep, the infamous experiment with Schrodinger's cat. So, what was the point of the experiment? First of all, we have a box and a cat. In the box, there's a container with toxic gas and a special mechanism. Every hour, there's a 50% chance that this mechanism will either open the gas container or not. If it happens, the poisonous gas will be released and the poor cat won't make it. If this doesn't happen, the cat will remain alive and well. Don't worry, this was a purely hypothetical experiment. No cats were harmed in the process. But let's imagine that we did lock a cat in a box and waited for an hour. It's time to check the result. And here's where we get close to the most interesting part. How do you think this situation would end in our regular world? Well. Probably within an hour, the container would either open or not, and that would be the moment sealing the cat's fate. After that, we'd just need to open the lid to find out the answer. But in quantum physics, everything is much stranger. According to it, until we open the box, the cat inside would be both alive and not alive at the same time. In other words, the universe itself doesn't know what to do with this cat. As if the poor animal is on the verge of two worlds inside the box. And when you open the lid, the universe will select a random result of the experiment. So why do we do all this to a poor kitty? Well, initially, Erwin Schrodinger wanted to show how stupid it all sounded. But then, he accidentally proved that quantum physicists were right. The situation turned out to be pretty funny. 
It went like this. Ha ha ha, these quantum physicists have no idea what they're talking about. <laughs> According to their logic, the cat in my box should be both alive and not alive at the same time. Wait, hold on. Uh-oh. They're right. Schrodinger received the Nobel Prize in 1933, even though it wasn't for this discovery. And in 2022, three more scientists received the Nobel Prize for another discovery in this field. Thank you. These scientists were Alan Aspect, John F. Clauser, and Anton Zeilinger. They got it for their experiments that involved entangled quantum states. What does all this tell us? Guess now we'll have to look for explanations in some kind of quantum mechanical magic. Unfortunately, humanity isn't developed well enough to test any of these theories, yet. But we have many cool assumptions. For example, the theory of parallel universes is one of the attempts to explain this phenomenon. Remember that ball in the box? Basically, according to the theory of the multiverse, there is an infinite number of different realities. So, if you don't know what the ball looks like, it kind of exists in this interdimensional, uncertain state. But when you open the box and look at the ball, you get transported to a random reality. For example, to the one where it's blue. It sounds pretty incredible, but still exciting. Alright, but why do we need all this info now? Why is it connected to the recent discovery? You see, scientists thought, if teeny tiny particles in our universe behave like this, then what about some giant space objects? And so, they decided to direct their devices not into the microcosm, but into distant space. American and Israeli theoretical physicist Jacob Bakenstein was the first to suggest that black holes may have the same weird properties, but this theory had to be tested. The research itself was aimed at finding a connection between quantum particles and black holes. The researchers created a computer structure in which they placed a simulated quantum particle directly outside a giant simulated black hole. And in the end, this analysis showed that, yep, black holes could also exist in several states at once. For example, they can be incredibly massive and at the same time have no mass at all. And each of these mysterious space gates can have several masses at the same time. The modeling showed that these superimposed masses were, in fact, in certain determined bands or ratios, as predicted by Bakenstein, said the physicist Magdalena Zeik, referring to the study. It's not really clear yet what it all means. And this discovery alone hasn't brought us much closer to understanding how our universe works or what happens inside black holes. We have realized only one thing. Everything around us is much more complicated and more fantastic than we think. Who knows? Maybe black holes are portals between these parallel universes. At this stage, it's impossible to disprove this. In other words, the universe has once again shown us that it is stranger and more mysterious and fascinating than we could imagine. Let's hope that in the future, we'll be able to understand at least a bit of what's going on in it. So, you're standing on a diving board in the middle of an open space. You look down, but that's not a pool. It's a giant black hole. Well, what the heck. You start swinging and then you jump. The gravity of the black hole grabs you, and you pick up speed. Just a little more, and you'll enter the dark abyss. But you're not afraid. You're sure you can survive the fall into the black hole. Besides, you have a clear goal – to travel through time. But first, let's figure out how it works and why time stops near a black hmm. hole. This is the space-time grid. It's what our entire universe is made of. And just like a regular grid, it sags if you put something heavy on it, <laughs> like me. For example, let's put the planet Earth here. You see a little funnel that is formed around the Earth. And if you put a small ball next to the planet, it'll roll into the funnel. That's how gravity works. The heavier the object, the more it bends space-time. By comparison, here's the Sun. It's almost 333,000 times heavier than the Earth. So it makes a really big funnel. So big that all the planets in our solar system move around that star inside that funnel. So now, let's put a black hole on a space-time grid. 
its centers are infinitely heavy, so they create a limitless deep well. And anything caught in the black hole's gravitational field can never leave it, not even moving at the speed of light. Okay, their gravity Hmm. is infinitely strong, but why do they slow down time? It's all about the speed of light. According to physics law, the speed of light must be the same at every point in our universe, even in a black hole. So, for our experiment, we take this ball, a photon of light that can travel 671 million miles per Hmm? hour. You could get from Earth to the Sun at that speed in 8 minutes. That's how long it takes light to travel from our star to our eyes. So, when you're looking at the Sun, you're looking back in time 8 minutes ago. By the way, don't look at it directly. Now, the critical thing to remember here is that velocity consists of two physical quantities. Space, miles, and time, hours. We'll use that later. Now, let's look at the black hole in our space-time grid. In three-dimensional space, it appears like this. But if we assume that space is two-dimensional, our grid looks like this when viewed from above. Just a lot of squares. And this is the black hole right in the middle. If you look at the grid from the side, you'll see a straight line. And the black hole here looks like a pit, or like an endless well. Now, let's follow our photon of light in three-dimensional space. Here, it's moving toward the black hole, and then it falls into the well of the black hole. And it continues its motion at a constant speed. Now, the side view. Again, the photon moves from left to right, and then falls. Its velocity doesn't change. The problems begin if you look at the experiment from above. When the photon of light moves in the distance of the black hole, its speed is stable. But then it goes down into the well. First, it slows down, and then it just stands still. But it's moving downwards. The photon moves in an arc down the well in the lower dimension without changing its speed. But in the higher dimension, it traveled a minimal distance at the same speed. Usually, this would mean that the photon was moving at a low speed in the second case. But not in the case of the speed of light. Remember, it must be the same at every point in the universe. The number 671 million miles per hour shouldn't change. So, we change the very parameters of that number. Time. Time itself must slow down so much that this slight movement of the photon, when you look at it from above, was at the same speed. 671 million miles per hour. But if you go down and look at this well much lower, you see that its walls are almost vertical. So, a photon of light would be moving in a vertical trajectory. That means that if you look at it from above, the photon will just be standing still. Again, its velocity can't change, so time will vary. At that point, it should just stop. This is what happens near a black hole. Now, if you look at a black hole, you can see this effect in action. It swallows up the light around it. But as for an observer, it seems to you that the light stays in orbit around the black disk. In fact, at that moment, the photons are still moving at the speed of light inside the black hole. It's because time has slowed down there so much that you feel like the light has stopped there. This disk is called the event horizon, the point of no return, the last stop before you go into the black abyss. And at the very center of the black hole is the singularity. This point of space is so dense that if you try to describe it with any numbers or physical quantities, they would all tend toward infinity. Simply put, all the laws of physics we know just stop working here. So a scientist can't say exactly what awaits you in the singularity. Before you make that jump into the black hole, let's drop a space probe there with a blue light that flashes once per second. And let's attach giant clocks to it. You see the probe falling into the black hole, gaining speed. But then it starts to slow down. Moreover, the probe flattens out and seems to spread out around the black hole. And then you notice that the blue beacon on the probe has changed its light. It now flashes as red. It's because the light is a wave. Blue is a truly short wave with a high frequency. But the black hole's gravity acts on this wave, stretching it out. The light waves get lengthened and become broader and less frequent. The new wavelength and frequency match with the red color. It's called redshift. Also, the probe blinks now not once a second in short beeps, but lights up and goes out for a long time. It's because of the time warp. If you, as an observer, look at the clock on the probe, the second hand there barely moves. However, the clock on your hand works as usual. 
But if you could be in a black hole, time would seem normal to you. And the arrow on the clock would move as it did before. But the hands on the clock outside the black hole would move like crazy to you. That's because time goes much faster outside the black hole. Oops, your probe just got ripped apart. That's because of the substantial difference in gravity that acts on the probe. The black hole's gravitational force increases with every foot of approach. That is, if you were to extend your hand toward the black hole hard, the gravity on your fingers would be much stronger than on your shoulder. This force would cause your fingers to lengthen, simply like spaghetti. That's why many people think it's impossible to survive falling into a black hole. But scientists think you could survive without a problem. Hey, maybe they should jump first just to make sure. (laughs) The thing is, you have to pick a black hole as big as possible, like the ones at the centers of galaxies, for example. That bright spot at the center of the Milky Way also has a black hole. It's about 1 million times heavier than the Sun. And this is the Messier 87 galaxy, one of the most massive galaxies among our neighbors. In 2019, humanity got its first-ever photo of the black hole at the center of this galaxy. It's about 6.5 billion times heavier than our Sun. So, it's the perfect place to make your jump into a black hole finally. Let's go! At first, you feel a strong acceleration as the incredible force of gravity grabs you. But in the case of a supermassive black hole like this, The gravity doesn't change as dramatically. That's because of its size. Right now, the gravitational force on your legs is about equal to the gravitational force on your head. So you don't turn into spaghetti, and you feel comfortable. You see that the light from the stars and all the space around you has begun to shrink at a certain point. It means that you have already passed the event horizon and are now moving toward the black hole's heart. As a result, The light of the universe becomes a small dot for you and then disappears altogether. If we look at our space-time grid, you're already falling into a well. Time is completely stopped for you. However, the rest of the world continues to move steadily through time. If you could now look at the Earth from a black hole, you would see a time-lapse, an accelerated video of how the months and years go by on our planet. If you had a jetpack that had an incredible engine to pull you out of the black hole, then you can make a jump forward in time. In one second, centuries on Earth could pass in the heart of a supermassive black hole. But this only works one way. You can't go back in time. But for now, you keep falling into the black hole. Beyond that, no one knows what'll happen to you. We only have theories about wormholes and white holes that might transfer you somewhere else in the universe. So, enjoy your trip! And just think about all the frequent flyer miles you're racking up. (laughs) To see one of the most significant astronomical events of all time, we go to South America. In the Atacama Desert, Chile, we find the most advanced technology for space observation. Here, the Royal Astronomical Community members watch for six months as a black hole simply absorbed a massive star. By the way, these are the same scientists who prove that in the center of our Milky Way galaxy is a supermassive black hole, and even took a photo of it. For the first time in history, this incredible event happened very close to Earth. Well, the distance of 215 million light years is considered quite close in astronomy terms anyway. Light from this event reached our planet in September of 2019, and even the most experienced scientists dropped their jaws in surprise. Imagine a star the size of our Sun, about 860,000 miles wide. Such stars have enough weight to create a strong gravitational field, holding many planets in their orbit. And now, let's place a giant black hole next to it. The hole is absolutely black, shaped like a disk, and weighs a billion times more than this star. The force of its gravitational field is incredible. Nothing can leave its gravity force. Objects that can move at the speed of light will still fall into this black abyss. Even light itself cannot escape its boundaries. As soon as a star enters the gravitational field of a black hole, it has no chance. At first, it tries to resist the pull of the black hole. Still, the star's outer layers begin to stretch toward the black hole, just like spaghetti. 
This is due to a powerful force of attraction. If you had the opportunity to extend your hand toward the black hole, Hmm. you would see your fingers begin to stretch and elongate. This is because the force of attraction increases with every inch. Therefore, it acts stronger on your fingers than on your arm. That's why this process of pulling objects into a black hole is called spaghettification. The first thing to be sucked into the black hole is the star's crown. This is the outer shell of the star, which consists of hot plasma. You may notice how the star begins to shrink in size. This is because that plasma makes up most of the visible sun. When this hot plasma spaghetti reaches the black hole, it may appear to remain on the disk's edge and continue to orbit the black hole. But in fact, there is no turning back anymore. The star's particles have already hit the event horizon of the dark abyss. The gravitational field of a black hole bends light around its edges, so the event horizon looks a bit like a croissant for the observer. Boy, lots of food metaphors here. I'm getting hungry. You may also notice a kind of chaos in this ring, as if some light particles are moving in one direction and others in another. This happens because of a mirror effect. But you can be sure that whatever reaches the event horizon will, sooner or later, be pulled into the singularity, or the black pearl of the black hole. Another illusion you spot is the star particles in the event horizon moving slower. The truth is that supermassive objects like a black hole curve space-time around them. And the more massive the object, the slower time flows near it. If you hang one watch beside a black hole and another on a wall in your bedroom, you will see that the second hand in the first watch barely moves, while a whole day passes on Earth. As observers, it seems to us that the particles of light have slowed their movement. But in fact, they may have already been absorbed by the black hole ages ago. Now, massive streams of red-hot plasma splash into space, just like spaghetti sauce. (laughs) When a black hole has absorbed star material, It emits powerful rays of energy at a rate of about 6,200 miles per second. This release of energy is accompanied by an intense flash. It's thanks to this flash that scientists can even detect this process in the first place. This phenomenon can be observed when a supernova explodes. When nothing remains of the star's body, we can still see stardust and other particles in the black holes of event horizon. Kind of like the Parmesan cheese sprinkled on the spaghetti. Hey, stop me if I'm taking this too far. When the process of spaghettification is completed, about half of the star's weight has been thrown into outer space as dust and glowing particles. The other half was entirely absorbed by the black hole. The scientists observed this process for almost six months. But what would be more interesting is to dive into a black hole yourself. Well, we can't do that yet, but we can simulate this process. Here's a little drone, our metal friend, kind of like a meatball. No, I haven't had lunch yet. Right now, it's at a safe distance from the black hole, the length of about three widths of the event horizon. Objects at this distance can orbit the black hole safely. A little closer, and it'll be swallowed up by a dark infinity. So our destroyed star could have safely existed at this distance. Moreover, planets can live at this distance. And if there is a suitable source of light and heat somewhere nearby, life can exist on these planets too. But our goal is the singularity, and we guide the meatball, I mean the drone, closer to the event horizon. After a few minutes, the force of attraction begins to strengthen, and the drone starts to stretch like spaghetti. When it begins spinning around the black disk, it means it has reached the event horizon and has started its descent into the black abyss. Now, let's look at everything from the drone's perspective. All the light from the stars that it sees becomes blue. This is called gravitational blue shift. As it falls into the black hole, its gravitational field pulls the photons of light down, giving them energy. Their wavelengths grow shorter, so the red photons change into blue. The drone continues to fall and is already completely hidden from our eyes. And all that the robot sees is a bright, thin blue beam. Now it's in complete darkness. There's absolutely nothing here, not even time. 
Here, time goes so slowly that our entire solar system could grow old and cease to exist during a minute spent in a black hole. But our drone will live until its battery is empty. Hey, the drone sees a small bundle of light again, and it's getting closer and more prominent. Now the drone will experience the same fall, only in reverse. Once the drone leaves the singularity, the heart of the black hole, it will be on the event horizon once again. The light from the stars gradually changes from blue to red. Then the drone is thrown into outer space, perhaps in some faraway galaxy. Well, returning from a black hole is just a theory. Some people think that black holes are a kind of wormhole that can lead us to distant places in space. But so far, these theories are considered fiction. Black holes are quite challenging to detect. The problem is, they are, well, black, just like space. They don't emit light like stars, so they can only be detected by gravity anomalies. Despite this, scientists believe there are a vast numbers of black holes in our universe. They're born when a massive star collapses under its own weight. And given the infinite number of stars in the universe, black holes are probably a common phenomenon. Scientists believe black holes have their own lifetimes. This is because of Hawking radiation. A black hole loses mass, and so, to continue existing, it has to absorb massive objects, like the star we just watched. But if the black hole lives in deep space, it has less to absorb and will most likely begin to shrink until it just disappears. Like this plate of spaghetti. Mm.